Welcome to worship, all God's people. Welcome to our online worship here at Crossroads United Pastoral Charge. Welcome to the season of Lent. Our gathering song is from Voices United. It's number 662, Lead Me God. <clears throat> Make your way plain before my face, for it is you and you are only who makes me to dwell in safety. It's a new time and a new season. We have something new for our worship today and for your worship at home. The writer of the book of Ecclesiastes said, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Lent is a season and a time to go deeper into the mystery and love of God. To help us go deeper, we're inviting you to create a simple worship center at your home. The symbols will be common things a candle to begin, perhaps a Bible, a stone, a cup, and so on. All of the symbols you'll collect are things from around our homes. They are meant to be meaningful to you and your family. Week by week, we will invite you to add to your Lenten symbols. The details are in our weekly email called Lenten Worship Symbols at Home. Today, Let's start with a candle. Here at church, it's the Christ candle. At this time, you might want to light your candle at home. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. May the light of Christ shine brightly in your life. And also in yours. Join us in our call to worship. Come, people of God, return to the one who gives us life. We come as children of God, longing for a closer walk with our Creator. We cannot live by bread alone. Life is intended to be more than food. Our worship is the opening of ourselves to receive the gifts of the Spirit. Let us worship God. Let us pray together. Our opening prayer. Gracious God, you are our sacred space within a swirling storm. You are our source of calm amid chaos. Help us to become more aware of your constant, gentle presence. We long for strength to sustain us, for love to replenish us, and your peace to fulfill us. In this time of worship, and in this time of pandemic, may we be reminded and reassured that we are truly yours. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Join us as we sing the hymn number from Voices United 222, Come, Let Us Sing. Let us sing to the Lord our song. We have stood silently too long. Surely the Lord deserves our praise. So joyfully thank God for our days. O thirsty soul, come drink at the well. God's living waters will never fail. Surely the Lord will help you to stand, strengthened and comforted by God's hand. You dwell among us and cause us to pray and walk with each other following your way. 
precious brothers and sisters will grow in the fulfilling love they know. Deserts shall bloom and mountains shall sing to the desire of all living things. Come all you creatures high and low, let your praises endlessly We all need the strength that comes through prayer. All through this pandemic, volunteers have been praying and knitting for our prayer shawl ministry. This ministry continues to share shawls, prayer pockets, and twiddle muffs for seniors in personal care homes. We've had a request from Palliative Care for a number of prayer shawls. It is our privilege today to bless these knitted and crocheted creations that they may go out and become a blessing to others. Through the ages, God has moved the people of Christ to share a ministry of comfort, support, and prayer with all who are in need of God's healing presence. With gratitude for these prayer shawls, we gather to bless and dedicate them in God's name. And our scripture lesson. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to them, from Isaiah 40. Jesus said, how often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings from Luke 13, verse 34. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. From Philippians 4, verses 5 to 7. This is our blessing. Holy God, source of all inspiration and beauty, we thank you for creative hands, which fashion the gift of prayer shawls, knitted and crocheted for the comfort of others. May God's grace be upon these shawls. Warming, comforting, comforting and enfolding, and embracing. May these mantles be a safe haven, a sacred place of security and well-being, sustaining and embracing in good times as well as difficult ones. May the ones who wear these prayer shawls be cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and wrapped in love. May these shawls be a symbol to all of the community of care to which we are called. May they strengthen the ties that bind our hearts together in Christian love. Amen. We will be reading from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness he was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you this day. Welcome to our friends at Boyne Lodge and at the Elm Creek Manor. And to all of you who join us on Facebook and YouTube from the warmth of your homes. It is good to be together. By the grace of Christ, we are joined and knitted together into a, a wonderfully wide and diverse circle of humanity. One thing we've gained through this time apart is a deeper appreciation for the simple things in life. Think of how we miss getting together for, for morning coffee with our friends, having children and grandchildren over for a meal, hanging out at the rink, or enjoying the atmosphere of a, a soup luncheon at church. You know it's bad when the highlight of your week is the trip to the post office. We'll never take such ordinary meetings for granted again. We've been spending a lot of time alone. And for some, more than others. This being alone business has become very hard. It affects people of all ages in their bodies and in their souls. We miss our friends down the streets, down the street, and, and hugs. We miss singing together. And we worry for those who are separated from us by distance. And some people are worn out and at their wits' ends. This sermon is called Never Alone, which might seem an odd title in a pandemic when so many are separated from the ones they love. But you remember how the United Church new creed begins, we are not alone. If you are struggling with being alone and in need of comfort, I hope the worship we share, the beloved community of which we are a part, and the words of this sermon might, might bless and strengthen you in the week to come. Might we pray? Holy, holy, holy are you, our God. Thank you for the gift of this day. Thank you for the sun that shines and warms the frozen earth. Thank you for tiny, perfect miracles called sparrows who, who greet us even on the coldest morn. Thank you for masked strangers who stop and say hello on the streets and pathways. And thank you for this opportunity to pause, to breathe in your spirit, and to worship you. Gracious God, wherever your children feel alone or separated by distance, help them and us to sense that you are with us now and forever. Amen. The season of Lent begins with the story of Jesus baptized by John in the Jordan. Jesus saw the heavens crack wide open and heard a voice calling out, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. Walking away in, in awe and wonder from the banks of the Jordan, the, the Spirit immediately drove Jesus into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, with only the wild creatures as his companion. And while he was wrestling alone by himself in the wilderness... The angels came and waited on Jesus. In the Bible, the word waited is sometimes translated as 
served or ministered. It's a Greek word, diakonia, from which we get diaconal ministers and deacons. The angels waited. The angels served. The angels ministered to Jesus in the wilderness. And I want to ask, why God? Why did you need to send your angels to wait on Jesus? And I wonder if God might answer my question with a question. Have you ever spent 40 days alone? 40 days is a long time. Maybe not in a pandemic, but still, it's a long time to be alone. And more than that, Jesus wasn't just in the wilderness. He was in the wilderness tempted by Satan. These forces, they tried to crack Jesus' spirit. They were tempting Jesus, trying to turn him, to, to weaken him, and persuade Jesus to give up. We've all had forces that work at us, whispering, you're worthless. No one will hire you. You're a lousy parent. Nobody cares about you. He'll never love you. You might as well give up. Especially when we're alone, the forces can, can work at us. And these forces have a goal to make us afraid. It's often in the night that fears work their way inside our heads. In the wilderness, under the starry skies, God sent angels to Jesus to take away his fear and to remind Jesus that he was not alone. Jesus, the teacher, healer, comforter and consoler, the one we lean upon in troubled times, he once leaned into the comfort of angels. God knew even Jesus needed an angel. Even Jesus knew how tough it can be to spend long days and nights alone. For some people, the experience of being alone can raise the fear of abandonment. Think of a child in a, a department store with their parents. One minute the child is, is fascinated by what they see on a, a store shelf, and the next they're looking around and their parent is gone. Where did they go? The child looks and looks, and all they see are, are these strange faces. And the fear is immediate. Have my parents left without me? Have they abandoned me? This fear of being abandoned, alone, and forgotten can be traumatic for people of any age or circumstance. And whether you are six in a grocery store or, or 96 in a personal care home, no one wants to feel abandoned. Some people have illnesses that keep them apart, that prevent them from going out for extended periods of time. People who suffer from migraine headaches can feel locked away. And people with weakened immune systems have been forced to self-isolate to, to a degree that we can hardly imagine. And we've had almost a year when people in personal care homes and hospitals have gone with few or, or even no visitors. Some have wondered if their friends, their family have forgotten them. Jesus has a heart for people who feel forgotten. Jesus knew from personal experience what it's like to wrestle with fear. So what sustained Jesus? In the wilderness, 
angels ministered to Jesus that he would have faith that he was not alone. Now, the Bible doesn't say how the angels waited, served, ministered to Jesus. That part is left up to our imagination. And I wonder if perhaps the angels sang Jesus songs to, to comfort him. Appar angels apparently have a gift for singing and some of them are, are very good at it. Maybe they brought along a harp or a ukulele to accompany the heavenly chorus. Or this. Angels are known to serve up a heavenly banquet. I wonder if the angels prepared a table before him in the plain sight of the one who tried its best to make Jesus afraid. Or maybe the angels brought soup or muffins to comfort him. Or the angels might have just sat beside Jesus, listened to his struggles and the worries Jesus faced. Or maybe the angels joined Jesus in prayer. Or maybe they just held his hand. Or maybe Jesus was tired from wandering 40 days in the wilderness and the angels came and washed his tired feet. Maybe the angels just showed up and their presence was enough to drive away any fear. There are endless ways God's angels bring people comfort. And sometimes it's a song. Sometimes it's muffins or a container of soup. Sometimes angels make a fuss over us and remind us how we're loved. Sometimes they call us. And sometimes they just show up. Because that's what angels do. I would like to introduce you to, to one of my angels. She, she doesn't have wings yet. Her name is Leisha Case. Leisha was a, a long-serving member of Presbytery from Trinity United in Portage. And Leisha was assigned to me by Agassiz Presbytery to, to you know, to, to look out for me. For years... Leisha would call. And I am certain Leisha had my name written in her date book with a note, Call Harold. And Leisha would call and ask, How are you doing, Harold? And we would have conversation. And she would check in with me. She always sent the most thoughtful cards, especially at Christmas. Leisha is a, a faithful layperson and a wonderful pastor to pastors. She waited on me, ministered to me, and her calls always felt like they came from God's servant church who knows and cares about all sorts of people. Are you in a wilderness place where you feel forgotten or even abandoned. Maybe it's been a long time since you had the, the human contact you crave. Take heart. Jesus knows the fears you face. And more than that, Jesus has done something to strengthen you and to take away your fears. When you were baptized... You were joined with Jesus in God's covenant and promise that holds every one of us. Through baptism, you are claimed as God's own and given the name God's beloved child. And all the whispers you think you hear in the night that want to drag you down, don't listen to them. Don't believe them. As the baptismal hymn tells us, God's promises are true. God will not abandon you. You are gifted, called, 
and chosen. You belong to God. Maybe you know someone waiting for their angel to come. How might you connect with them this week? Angels are God's messengers who comfort and share the good news with God's people. They are part of the diakonia, that company of faithful people who, who wait on, who serve, and who minister in Jesus' name. So whether you are waiting on an angel or whether you are an angel in waiting, be confident in the Lord. Be not afraid. L live out your high calling in Jesus Christ. And may God's angels sing songs and bring you comfort as you walk this Lenten journey. Grace and peace to you in the strong name of Jesus who comes to set us free. I would invite you now to, to join with me in saying a new creed. The words will, will come up on your screen. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Up next in our service is something new and what we're calling a ministry of justice moment, shared by Karen Jaden. St. Matthew's Maryland Community Ministry in downtown Winnipeg is one of three ministries supported by One Just City. Our gifts to mission and service help One Just City respond with love and compassion when our neighbors in inner-city Winnipeg are hungry, unsheltered, or need a place, a warm place, to build community. The recent extreme cold, on top of the extra challenges with the pandemic, make this ministry more challenging and more necessary than ever. When we hear about the suffering of some of Manitoba's most vulnerable citizens, we want to know what we can do to help. Next week, Josh Ward, Community Facilitator with St. Matthew's Maryland Community Ministry, will be our guest preacher during worship. Join us to learn more about this vital ministry and ways that we can be partners in building one just city together. Thank you for joining us today. If you know of someone in need of prayer or care, please let us know at the office. Let us gather our hearts and minds in prayer. Let us pray. God of life and love, we thank you that you have made us in your image, lit within us the very spark and flame of your own life, and set us in the heart of your creation, a world of wonders that is our home. Hear our quiet prayers now, loving God, as we name before you and hold in our hearts those people and situations that need your care and call out for your peace. Gracious God, hear our prayer 
and in your love you answer. Holy One, we thank you that, that we are wondrously made, breathing your very life within us, and that you placed us in communities within families who care for us and, and who need our caring. Hear our quiet prayers now, loving God, as we name before you and hold in our hearts those who especially need your healing and your life-renewing touch. We pray this day for those who are ill this day at home or in hospital and for those in personal care homes. We pray for those who are waiting upon test results or treatment and for those recovering from surgery. And we pray for those for whom their future is uncertain. Gracious God, hear our prayer, and in your love you answer. Listening, loving God, we give thanks for in Christ you have walked among us, sharing our joys and celebrations, our our fears and our sadness, life and death, and life beyond death. Through his presence we sense most clearly the life of abundance you wish for all people, the shalom, the, the peace beyond understanding that is your will for all your children. Hear our quiet prayers now, God of peace, as we name before you and hold in our hearts the places in our life and the people in our world most in need of that peace. Gracious God, hear our prayer, and in your love you answer. Calling God, we give thanks for the invitation that comes to us new every morning to to join with you in Christ in the unfolding of your kingdom. Make good use of us, we pray. Use our hands, our feet, our voices. Use our strength and our resources. Use our weaknesses and our faults. Open our hearts that we might become channels and instruments of your peace. And hear our quiet prayers, O God, as we name before you and hold in our hearts those parts of our lives that need and crave your Spirit's touch. God of grace, these and all of our prayers, spoken and silent, we bring to you in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us the family prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Join us in our closing hymn from Voices United, number 644, I Was There to Hear Your Morning Cry. was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to soothe you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell. When you 
heard the wonder of the word. I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time, and you join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young, I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in, and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been, with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. And now for our final blessing. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Be safe and be encouraged. Blessings to you. Our sending out is in Voices United 298 when you walk from here. Walk with mercy and with God.